I'm Blaine Carter, and together we're going to be exploring the what, why, and how of open source technologies. Howdy! I'm going to show you how to use some of the features that are included in the Oracle Cloud free tier. Now, if you haven't already signed up for the Oracle Cloud free tier, you can go to www.oracle.com slash cloud slash free, and then you'll click this start button over here. Uh, it'll ask you for some information, get that all filled out, and get an account. I'm going to quickly walk through how to set up an always free autonomous transaction processing database uh, on your uh, Oracle Cloud account. So the first thing you want to do is go to your Oracle Cloud uh, dashboard for your account, locate this box here that says autonomous transaction processing, uh, create a database, and always free, notice a little marker there, and then click on that box that will bring you into the create autonomous database uh, form. And so I like to keep all of my work objects for projects grouped together. So I'm going to use the demo compartment to group this in with my other demo objects. And then the next thing you want to fill in is a display name. This will be the name that will show up if maybe you have your databases listed out in a table or maybe a drop down list somewhere. This will be the uh, user friendly human readable name. So I'm going to call this new database and then uh, that one, by the way, the display name is changeable, but the database name, this is not. This is going to be the name assigned to the database that will show up in places like your pre-generated TNS names file. So here I'm going to call it just new DB, and I'll leave that there. That's good enough. We'll scroll down. I could create a data, <clears throat> excuse me, a data warehouse or a transaction processing database, either one. Uh, at this point, I want the transaction processing one, so I'll leave it alone. That's going to be serverless. Uh, make sure that this little switch here is flipped on so that it locks in the always free uh, options for your database. We'll scroll down here and enter the credentials for the admin user. So when you're creating an autonomous database, the admin user will be used instead of sys or system. So this password does need to be, um, let me copy that from over here. This password does need to be a good password and keep it safe, keep it secure. So I'm gonna pass, paste in my passwords. And then I'm going to leave this set, that set there. Since we are doing an always free database, I'm going to leave it with license included. And then I will just hit the create autonomous database button. And that will get me to the details for our new database. You can see it's provisioning right there. And so I'm going to leave this here and I will come back uh, once the database has been provisioned in a minute or two. Now that my Autonomous Transaction Processing Database, or ATP, is up and running, and I can tell it's up and running because I've gone, I'm, I'm on the uh, Autonomous Database Details page, and the background for the icon is green, and here it says Available. Uh, one other thing I can tell from this page is that it says always free here. That means that when I created the database, I used the options that qualify for the always free license. Had I not used those, then it would be under some other license and I'd have to go check and see uh, what I had done there. But now I have my database up and running. I'd like to get connected to it. But one thing to note is that the autonomous databases from Oracle tend to have a little extra security baked into them, uh, meaning that in order to connect, we're going to need a wallet to uh, connect to that. And to get that wallet, there's a couple different ways. Uh, one way to get that wallet is to click on this button here that says DB Connection. When you connect on that, you're going to get this uh, little form that pops up here. And we want to use this to download an instance wallet. But just before we download the instance wallet, I want to I want to point out a couple things that you can do on this screen. One is down here. You can see some of the TNS names that will be included in the TNS names file, which will be part of that zip file. And remember when we set up the database and I said that the database name would be used in different places. Right here you can see that it's new DB underscore and then the different levels of connection that you want to connect in. And what each one of these are generally uh, meant to be used for, if you want to know, though, uh, know that, you can click on this documentation 
navigation link here and that'll take you to the docs. Uh, the one I typically use for most uh, work when I'm, when I'm processing transactions, hint, is the newdb underscore tp uh, connection right there. So that's the one I'll be using. And then the other thing I want you to notice is this rotate wallet button here. Uh, let's say I downloaded my wallet file and I was bad and I lost track of that wallet file or maybe one of my developers is moving on to another company. Uh, in those, both of those scenarios, it's a good idea to invalidate the credentials that are existing and create new ones. So you can click this rotate wallet button, fill in the, de the details there and then download a new wallet. All right, on to downloading the wallet. I want to click on download the wallet button and then it's going to create a zip file for me and download the zip file but I need to put a password on that zip file uh, just so not everybody can just pop it open and use it so I'll enter a password for that and then I will hit download and that will bring me here and uh, you can see I've already downloaded a wallet previously. I'm just going to overwrite that wallet because I've rotated that one out and I'm going to hit save. I should probably rename it when I do this, but I'm going to hit save and replace and that will download my wallet that I can use to connect to the database. So let me close that there. Another way you can get a hold of the wallet to, for your database is over here. You can see this button that says Service Console. If you click on that, that will open up this other tab where you can uh, go into the Service Console and see some information about your database. And then to get the wallet, you would click on Administration, Download Client Credentials, give it a username and pa or give it a, a password. This is the password for the zip file, just like before. Hit Download, and it would download. Uh, just like before. Uh, however, there are a couple other features I would like to point out as long as we're on the service console. Uh, one is while we're in administration, here's how you can set the admin password. And then here you can set up machine learning uh, users. Uh, which uh, you can do machine learning with the uh, always free. If you click on this tab here for development, uh, you'll see some other useful information and utilities here. This button will get you to your free included Oracle Apex instance uh, for your new database. If you're going to use just ORDS, uh, Oracle REST Data Services, or SODA, uh, you can come here and this is the URI that you would use to connect to your new database. Uh, maybe you want to download the Oracle Instant Client to use with one of your applications. Uh, Oracle has a relatively new uh, web version of SQL Developer, so you can get to that here by clicking on that button. And then this one allows you to create and use machine learning uh, SQL notebooks. So that's kind of a cool feature that I haven't dug into yet, but uh, it's on my list to do. So those are some extra features as long as you're in the service console. Now that I have created my uh, always free Oracle Cloud Autonomous Transaction Processing Database, uh, I usually just say ATP, so I have to think about what all the letters mean, uh, but now I've created my database, it's up and running. I went in and downloaded my wallet in that credentials file that also includes a TNS names uh, file I can use to connect with. I want to test my connection out. So to test it out, I'm going to use Oracle SQL CL, which is a SQL command line tool. And I'm going to call it by just typing in SQL because I've already set it up to work that way. But I'm going to enter using the no log option. What that does is I start up SQL CL, but I tell it don't try and connect to a database, just turn the tool on. Because before I connect to the database, I need to tell SQL CL where my credentials file is. And to do that, I use set cloud config, and then that's the location of that zip file that I downloaded earlier. Uh, when I had uh, replaced the previous file, renamed it, I would use the new name, obviously. But you notice this does all, goes all the way up to include the .zip. So I'll enter that in there, and you can see that the operation was successful. And now I want to connect 
as my admin user, so I'm going to use connect admin. Uh, you can see here is my super secret password that I use for all of my important stuff. So go ahead and memorize that if you'd like. And I'm connecting to that new DB underscore TP uh, uh, TNS name that I'd mentioned before in the, when we downloaded the wallet. Uh, you can change that to be high, low, medium, whichever one you want to connect to, assuming you've read the docs and you know what each level is for. So I'll click on that and that gets me connected to the database. And so let's run a simple query. I'm going to select sysdate from dual. And if I could type, that would be even better. So a cool feature of SQL CL, if I hit the up arrow key, you can see down there on the bottom, it comes back. I can arrow in, hit, uh, change that to say sysdate and re-enter my query. And there you go. I can. Uh, I can run queries against my database. So I'm logged in as admin, which uh, is similar to a sys or sys system user. So here I would go out and create all of my other new users and uh, go ahead and start using my database. And then of course to get out, I type exit and I'm out. So uh, there you go, easy enough. Uh, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, uh, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, feel free to leave a, a comment here. And uh, thank you for spending your time with me.